Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome to the Life in the Universe pandemic series. And thank you for coming back. And I hope, uh, as usual, that you're all looking after yourselves in this uh, now spreading pandemic. So today we're going to address, I think, um, what remains one of the most mysterious, but one of the most interesting questions about life in the universe, which is, how did life begin? And you have probably looked around you at some point at this virus and people and animals and wondered, where did all this start and how did it start? How did life on the planet begin? Well, I suppose to begin with, we have to wonder, what is the definition of life? And if you're interested in that question, you can watch uh, number one in this lecture series where I talk about, are viruses alive? Is the coronavirus alive in any uh, normal definition of life? And that lecture will explain the definition of life. But once we have decided that we've got life on the planet, the question is, how did it uh, all begin? And it is one of the big mysteries of biology. We don't have a definitive answer. I should say that right from the beginning. But uh, fascinatingly, chemists and others are beginning to come up with ideas about how all this started. And it's not quite the mystery it used to be. And it really used to be a mystery, this idea of, of life just emerging on a planet. No one had any idea about how it could have started. And that mystery has now been partly dispelled. We have some good ideas. We do know that our planet formed uh, 4.56 billion years ago uh, in the solar system uh, in a giant gas cloud that condensed and in the center the mass became high enough for uh, a lump of this material to ignite. Uh, nuclear fusion began and our star was born and around this star uh, much of the rest of the material coalesced in planetesimals, giant uh, concretions of planetary material from which the earth eventually uh, emerged. And this is not speculation. We can watch this process happening around distant stars, and we have a fairly good ex uh, idea of what went on in the early solar system. And we know that sometime after that, life began on our planet. Three and a half billion years ago, we find evidence for life in rocks, chemical and fossil evidence for life. Some people think that they find evidence uh, even earlier than that. It gets more controversial as you go back in time. But there is uh, unequivocal evidence for life in the rock record at around three and a half billion years and, uh, and later. So sometime between the formation of the Earth and this period in the rock record, life began on the Earth. Now, some people think that life could have started somewhere else and come to the Earth in rocks. And we can't disprove that idea at the moment. But it doesn't really get us very far because we still have to explain how life began on the planet where life uh, started before it came to the Earth. So although uh, it may well be an explanation for how life started on the Earth, we still have to explain the chemical steps that can lead to an origin of life, whether it occurred here or somewhere else and was transferred to the Earth. So for the moment, I'll simply assume that it started on the Earth. So how did this happen? Well, as I say, we don't precisely know, but there are some tantalizing facts about the universe that we might think about. If you collect uh, meteorites, these rocks that hurtle in from the sky and land on the Earth and you break them open, some of the carbon rich types of these meteorites have interesting molecules inside them. They contain amino acids, the building blocks, the Lego blocks, if you like, of proteins. And proteins make up much of our cells and the catalysts that carry out or accelerate uh, chemical reactions inside our bodies and inside uh, all living things on the Earth. Astonishingly, we find the building blocks of these uh, proteins, these amino acids, in meteorites, in rocks from space. We also find sugars. Sugars are the building blocks of carbohydrates. And I'm sure all of us have uh, been concerned in our lives at some point about how much carbohydrates we eat, whether that's donuts or, or sugary drinks, the unhealthy varieties. Carbohydrates are built up of sugars, and those sugars are found, astonishingly again, in meteorites. And even more incredibly, we also find nuclear bases. The letters of the genetic code are found in meteorites. So all of the basic ingredients for the major molecules that make up life are found in space rocks, in meteorites. In other words, they were being formed in the early solar system. No one has yet found life in a meteorite. No one has found organic, uh, complex organic compounds like whole bits of DNA or whole um, carbohydrates. Some people have claimed they have found proteins in, in meteorites, but there's no good evidence that a whole cell, a whole living thing, uh, was formed in space and delivered to the Earth in a meteorite. But that doesn't um, uh, dispel the, the astonishment we should have that inside meteorites are the basic 
uh, monomers or the building blocks of the major molecules of life. Interestingly, you can also form these molecules on the Earth. So Miller and Urey did a famous experiment in the 1950s where they took a glass jar and they filled it with gases that we think existed in the early Earth atmosphere, ammonia, hydrogen, other gases, and they sparked it in a sort of Frankenstein-like experiment. They sparked it with an electrical discharge, and that energy transformed those gases into amino acids, among other compounds, amino acids, the building blocks of proteins. So we now have this picture of the basic ingredients of life raining in from space and being formed on the Earth, coming together in both directions on the surface of our planet that could have provided the early soup, if you like, from which life could have emerged. So it's no longer a mystery uh, where the basic building blocks for life came from. We also see this organic carbon chemistry elsewhere. You can find complex carbon compounds on the surface of comets. That's not a controversy any longer. We see carbon compounds even uh, on the surface of Titan, one of Saturn's moons. Uh, methane uh, gas in the atmosphere of that moon uh, reacts in ultraviolet radiation to make complex organic carbon containing compounds that rain down onto the surface of Titan. We don't know whether there are uh, compounds on Titan of interest for life, but certainly we know that carbon chemistry is occurring everywhere in the universe and is strewn throughout the universe. It's not a mystery where complex carbon compounds um, came from. The real mystery is how those simple compounds, those simple molecules, transform themselves into a replicating life form that underwent evolution, the sort of stuff of interest to us, the sort of stuff we think about as being life. And that remains a bit of a mystery, but some people do have ideas. For example, this is where our friend coronavirus comes in. The coronavirus stores its genetic uh, information, the information on how it constructs itself on a piece of RNA, ribonucleic acid. It's an RNA virus. And as well as in modern viruses, people think that RNA could have been the most primitive type of genetic information on the Earth. It's an interesting molecule, RNA, because it doesn't just store genetic information. It can also carry out chemical reactions. It can catalyze chemical reactions. And these chemically reactive RNA uh, types of molecules called ribozymes can be produced in the laboratory and you can make them replicate themselves. They can even copy themselves. And not only that, but these copies of RNA molecules uh, have errors in them and they generate variety. And as they reproduce in the laboratory, they actually evolve, they undergo evolution. So these simple molecules really look like primitive living things. And some people have proposed that the early earth was covered in these chemically reactive RNA molecules, and they've called this the RNA world. So if you can imagine a planet covered in RNA undergoing these early chemical reactions. One of the reasons why these RNA molecules are so fascinating is because they can store information and carry out chemical reactions. One of the big mysteries about the origin of life is how you can do both of those things. If I take a piece of DNA from one of my cells and I put it on a table, it's absolutely useless. It's just a string of letters. It will sit there and do nothing. It's no good just having a genetic code that stores information. A problem with just having chemical reactions, on the other hand, is that sometimes they tend to go awry. It's good for a life form to have uh, some sort of instruction manual that tells it which chemical reactions to do. So metabolism, those chemical reactions in early cells, tend to be a little bit unruly on their own. So some people have thought, well, which came first? We need genetic information, but genetic information on its own is just useless. We also need chemical reactions, metabolism to make life happen. But metabolism on its own can sometimes be um, not very helpful, not very useful for life unless it's being controlled by some sort of genetic code. So here is one of the big conundrums in the origin of life. Which came first, the genetic code or metabolism, or did they emerge both at the same time? The interest in a molecule like RNA is that it can be both genetic code and chemically reactive molecule catalyst at the same time. And so in some sense, it, um, it solves some of this problem for us. But these are some of the problems in the origin of life. So here we have this potentially this RNA molecule may be associated with other molecules undergoing chemistry. How did they turn into a living thing? Well, they had to be encapsulated in 
some sort of bag, some sort of container to hold the molecules together. If you go shopping without a shopping bag, your shopping falls all over the floor and there's a big mess and you have to try and pick it all up and take it home under your arms and it's all very difficult. You go shopping with a shopping bag. The same thing for biology. If you have lots of molecules in a stream or an ocean, they tend to disperse. They tend to get scattered around the place and diffuse. So they can no longer be brought together to do chemical reactions. If you want a living thing, you want to take all those molecules and put them in a bag so that they can be in proximity to one another and carry out chemical reactions. And this is actually one of the fundamental characteristics or thought to be one of the fundamental characteristics of all living things, that living things are cellular. Uh, they are made up of cells, bags, if you like, containing all of these complex molecules interacting and doing all the things that living things do. Going back to our meteorites, uh, David Diemer, who is a scientist who studies the origins of life, extracted these fatty acids that make up these membranes, these vesicles, these, uh, these bags, and he put them into water. And to his astonishment, these fatty acids from meteorites instantly formed membranes, bags, in which molecules could be contained. So the meteorites even seem to contain uh, molecules needed to build these cellular bags. And he and his team, and other people as well, have since done experiments where they've taken um, molecules and encapsulated them in primitive membranes and showed that these bags can essentially act like living things, carrying out chemical reactions, replicating genetic information. So here's the picture. The picture is that the early Earth had molecules formed in space, raining in uh, from space in, in rocks, in meteorites. Uh, these same compounds were being formed on the early Earth as well. And these were the ingredients of early life. And at some propitious moment in the history of our early planet, these molecules uh, changed in a way that where they were capable of replicating, like simple RNA molecules. And those molecules themselves eventually became encapsulated in a membrane, in a vesicle, an ancient cell. And once they had become encapsulated, we now had the first cell, the first encapsulated living thing. And that cell would have undergone some sort of mutation or error. There would have been variations in those cells. More of them would have been produced, would have replicated. And the Earth was eventually conquered by these early living cells, these bags containing replicated molecules. This is the overall picture of the origin of life. We still don't know where it happened. In a future lecture, I'll talk about that in a bit more detail. Some people think the origin of life happened in hydrothermal vents. These are places in the deep ocean where hot fluids uh, gush up from inside the into the and that active hot chemistry is where some people think the origin of life could have occurred. We don't know exactly where. We'll think about this later. But we certainly have better ideas about how the early chemistry of life uh, might have occurred. It still remains uh, a mystery. Some of these uh, steps in the origin of life are unknown. For example, um, how did those early molecules, those amino acids, sugars, uh, nuclear bases, transform themselves into replicating molecules that would do evolution and the things that we're interested in to create a life form. What was the nature of the earliest cell, the last universal common ancestor of all cells on the earth? What did it contain? What was its chemistry like? What was its membrane like? How did it behave? Uh, how did it uh, proliferate into the diversity of life that we see uh, on, the, uh, on the earth today? These all remain uh, mysterious questions. But what I think is thrilling is that we're no longer sitting here with a complete mystery about the origin of life. It's not some sort of religious mystery as to how life emerged on our planet. We have very good ideas about where the building blocks of the molecules that make up life come from. We have examples of molecules that can replicate very simple molecules like RNA in the laboratory, giving us tantalizing insights into how the first replicating machinery came to be. And we also have some good ideas about how those bags, those enclosing vesicles that would have created the Earth, the first uh, early cells uh, were generated. And we have some ideas about how all of those things could have come together to create the first living thing. 
So how did life begin? We have some ideas now. It's not a complete mystery. And I think in the decades ahead, it will be fascinating to watch uh, the ongoing efforts of chemists to unravel one of the great mysteries about life in the universe. How did it begin? Thank you again for joining me. Look after yourselves.